Hello and welcome to this video on De Moivre's Theorem. In some of our previous videos, we've spoken about how we can represent numbers in polar form and how we can multiply those numbers in polar form together. So here's a quick example. Let's say we have uh, a number here, a at an angle of x degrees. I'm not too bothered about what, what the values of these terms are. Uh, but we're multiplying this number in polar form by another number, b, at an angle of y degrees. The result of that multiplication would be a times b at an angle of x plus y. So let's do another example that, that does have some numbers. Let's say we, we have uh, 10 at an angle of 15 degrees, say. And we're going to multiply that by 2 at an angle of 5 degrees. So following the pattern above, uh, a times b, in our case 10 times 2, is going to give us 20 at an angle of x plus y, which in our case is 20 again. 20 degrees. Now, let's say that instead of multiplying two different numbers together, we multiply the same number by itself. So let's say we have something like this, a at an angle of x degrees, multiplied by itself a at an angle of x degrees again. Well, what we're going to find here is our result is going to be a times a at an angle of x plus x degrees. We can simplify that. We can say a squared at an angle of 2x. So what we've done here, rather than multiplying a to the angle of x degrees by itself, a at an angle of x degrees, we could write something like this. We could say a at an angle of x degrees squared, because we've multiplied that term by itself. De Moivre's theorem is a generalization of this process, where we've taken a, a, a number in polar form raised to a power, and we're seeing that it's equivalent to this on the right-hand side. Let's write this out in a, in a more general form, and we'll say that r, which we'll call the modulus, at an angle of theta, the angle, raised to a power n is equal to r to the power n at an angle of n times theta. So this is our generalized form of de Moivre's theorem. And we can see that it matches our example above. Here we had a, a, a number in polar form raised to the power 2, or squared. And so we find on the right-hand side that our modulus is raised to the power n, or in other words, a is raised to the power 2. And our angle is multiplied by 2, because our angle theta is multiplied by whatever n is. So here we have our de Moivre's theorem. Uh, r at an angle of theta, all raised to the power n, is equal to r to the power n at an angle of n times theta. Let's see this a bit more clearly with some examples, and let's say, we'll move that up there, let's say we have our first example here, which is uh, 2 at an angle of 22 degrees, and let's say that that's raised to the power 4. So following de Moivre's theorem, our modulus is going to be raised to the power 4, so that's 2 to the power 4, and our angle is going to be multiplied by that power, so we'll have 4 times 22 degrees. And 2 to the power 4 is 16, and our angle, 4 times 22, is 88. So we end up with 16 at an angle of 88. Let's do a couple more. Let's say this time we have uh, 5 at an angle of minus 12. And let's say that we're going to raise that to the power 6. So again, de Moivre's theorem, our modulus is now going to be uh, raised to the power 6. So it's going to be 5 to the power 6. And our angle is going to be uh, minus 12 multiplied by 6. And so we have 
5 to the power 6 uh, gives us 15,625. And our angle is 6 times minus 12, which is minus 72 degrees. Let's have a look at one more example. If we move all of this uh, up here, uh, number 3. Let's say that we have a decimal this time. Let's say 3.4 at an angle of 5.2. And we'll raise that to the power 3. And so same again. Our formulation for the modulus is going to be raised to the power 3. And our angle is going to be our original angle, 5.2, which is multiplied by our power of 3. And... 3.4 to the power 3 uh, happens to come out as 39.304 uh, and that's at an angle of 3 times 5.2 which is 15.6 degrees. So we've seen how De Marvre's theorem can be used to raise uh, complex numbers in polar form to a power, but where de Moivre's theorem becomes particularly useful is to find the roots of complex numbers. And here's an example here, we can use this identity. Remember that the square root of a, for instance, is equal to a to the power of a half. Or we could say, um, to be more general, that the b root of a, we, we might want the cube root or the fourth root, um, which is where the b comes in, is equal to a to the power 1 over b. And so what we can do is, rather than raising our um, polar form number here to an integer value of n, we can start to raise to these fractional values using exactly the same method, but it allows us to find the square root or the cube root of complex numbers. So let's have a, no a look at uh, some more examples uh, in this section. Let's say that we want to find, we'll call this, I think we're on to example 4 now, we want to find uh, the square root of 4 at an angle of 10 degrees. And so now we know that that square root is the same as saying 4 at an angle of 10 degrees to the power 1 over 2. And using de Moivre's theorem, we can say that that is 4 to the power of a half at an angle of a half times 10 degrees. And so simplifying, well, 4 to the power of a half, or square root of 4, is 2. And our angle a half times 10 is 5. So we have... Our solution there, 2 at an angle of 5 degrees. Now, one thing you might be asking is, when we were here, our square root of 4, yes, one solution is 2, but there's another possible solution to the square root of 4, which is minus 2. And so this presents us with the question, do we have a second solution here? Not only 2 at an angle of 5 degrees, but also minus 2 at an angle of 5 degrees. The answer is, is almost, it's generally bad practice in when we're in polar form to represent our absolute value with a minus number. Because we're in polar form, rather than making our, our modulus a minus number, instead we're going to rotate our number through an angle of 180 degrees. So it's pointing in the opposite direction. So rather than saying minus 2 at an angle of 5 degrees, we'll get rid of that, we'll say instead that it's going to be 2 at an angle of minus 175 degrees. Let's see that on a diagram to make these two solutions a little clearer. So here we can see our original solution, 2 at an angle of 5 degrees. And rather than saying minus 2 at an angle of 5 degrees, we're saying that we're going to change the direction uh, so it's pointing in the opposite direction, rotating through 180 degrees. So now we have 2, our second solution, at an angle of minus 175 degrees. 
Let's have a look at another example now to calculate the cube root of a number. So here's our polar form uh, value here, 50 at an angle of 36 degrees, and we're going to find the cube root of that number. And so again, by following de Moivre's theorem, we're going to say that that is, first of all, the same as 50 at an angle of 36 uh, to the power 1 over 3. That's not uh, de Moivre's theorem yet. Here's where we apply de Moivre's theorem. We're going to say that that's the same as 50 to the power of a third, or 1 over 3, at an angle of a third times 36. And so what we find is that the cube root, uh, or 50 to the power 1 over 3, is equal to 3.684 to three decimal places. And that's at an angle of a third times 36, which is 12 degrees. Now, just like the, Q, the, sorry, the square root on the previous example had two possible solutions, the cube root has three possible solutions. And so the question is, what angles do our other solutions point at? Again, the easiest way is probably to visualise this. So here we see our plot of an argand diagram for our three possible results. And because we have three results, we want them to be equally separated on this diagram. And so in a possible 360 degrees, for equal separation, that means that each one is going to be separated by an angle of 120 degrees. And so what we find is we have our three solutions like so. When we measure uh, our angles, we're always measuring relative to the x-axis. So we see that our first solution is here, 3.684 at an angle of 12. That's what we calculated before, and that's 12 degrees relative to the horizontal. Our next solution is 120 degrees apart from that, so we have uh, 12 plus 120, which is going to take us to 132 degrees. Again, that angle of 132 degrees is measured all the way relative to our horizontal. Finally, adding 132 degrees, sorry, adding 120 degrees again to our 132 is going to take us down here. Now, we could have a, a large positive angle taking us all the way around, but really it's best to take an angle that's less than 180 degrees, and we're going to call it a minus angle instead. We're going down from the horizontal, and so that's going to take us to what ends up being minus 108 um, from that horizontal angle there. So what we find, generally speaking, I'll just make a note on the side here, is that for the nth root of a complex number, um, using de Moivre's theorem, so when I say the nth root, the square root, the cube root, or the fourth root, or the fifth root, um, is going to give us n solutions. And they're going to be separated by an angle of... 360 divided by n. So here, for example, we found the cube root or the third root, and so we found that there are three solutions. Here they are, one, two, and three, and they're all separated by 360 divided by n, or 360 divided by three in our case, which is 120. And so we see this 120 degree separation between all three. So lastly, let's look Add a slightly more complicated example. Let's say that we want to find um, the result of this complex number uh, minus 12 plus j7 and it's raised to the power minus 3 over 4. So a couple of things here. First of all, um, our complex number is not in polar form. It's in rectangular form using j as the imaginary number. And what we find here is that de Moivre's theorem doesn't apply to numbers in rectangular form. We'll have to convert this number, first of all, into polar form. So you can use the, the polar function on your calculator or similar, uh, but we can convert this to what will end up being as 13.89 at an angle of 149.74.
and that's raised to the power minus 3 over 4. So at this stage we can apply de Moivre's theorem and we can see that that's the same as 13.89 to the power minus 3 over 4 at an angle of uh, minus 3 over 4 multiplied by our original angle which was 149.75. Um, and in this case, we can um, we can enter this directly into a calculator generally, 13.89 uh, to the power minus 3 over 4. Just as a little aside, um, if, we, if we're familiar with um, the identity, uh, let's just call it x for now, x to the power minus 3 over 4, that's the same as saying 1 over x to the 3 over 4. And that's the same as saying 1 over um, the fourth root of x cubed. So depending on how you want to work that out, um, there's a few options there. But generally, we can just enter that as it, as it stands into the calculator. And we should get a result of 0 0.139 to three decimal places. So I'll put that here, 0 0.139. At an angle of, well, we said that our angle gets multiplied by uh, minus 3 quarters, or minus 3 over 4. And so we'll get minus 112.305 degrees. So another reason for men mentioning this, um, this identity on the left-hand side here is because... When we're, when we're raising something to the power minus 3 over 4, it's actually the 4 on the bottom that's telling us the root. As we can see here, we're taking the fourth root in this instance. And so here again, we found one solution using de Moivre's theorem, but we're looking for four solutions to be complete. And the solutions are all going to be separated by 360 divided by n. n in this case is 4. Um, and so 360 divided by 4 is going to be 90 degrees. Our, our results are all going to be separated by, a result, by, by an angle of 90 degrees. And so let's again see that in a diagram uh, just to make it a little clearer. So our original solution is this one here. 0.139 at an angle of minus 112.305 degrees. And we see that we have uh, three other possible solutions all separated by an angle of 90 degrees in order to give us a total of four solutions. Now you might be happy um, working these out just by adding or subtracting 90 to our original angle each time in order to determine these results. Notice they all have the same modulus 0.139 for each. Um, it's just the angles that are separated by 90 degrees. And you might be happy doing that just by um, subtracting or adding 90 degrees as we say. But it does help sometimes to, to draw the diagram to visualize it as well. So I hope this video has helped, first of all, to introduce the topic of de Moivre's theorem um, and to raise a complex number in polar form to a given power. We started with integer powers, but we've also seen how we can use the same uh, theorem to uh, find the roots of complex numbers as well.